Okay, good morning, everyone. Let's uh, begin the session for today. Um, we are going to uh, uh, go through first understanding how the functions are called. That's um, like what are the basics of calling a function, how does it work, and how it be called. And then after that, we are going to um, uh, talk about references, understand what references are, um, the mixture of both. And then after that, we're going to talk about dynamic memory allocation, understanding what it is and why we use it. Um, at the end, if we have time, we're going to have a quick quiz. Ten questions, ten minutes, and be done with it. Okay? So um, that's that. Any questions about what we talked about last time? For that, <laughs> it was a joke. Okay, then go ahead. No, I don't think so. I think they found another prof. So we'll see. If I, if, we have, if I'm going early, then no quiz. Okay, the, the ten minutes for the quiz is going to be so. But um, I'm looking at the messages that I have in the other computer. If if, it, if they tell me, then we're going to do that. Okay. Um, did we talk about references here? We did talk about references, right? Giving a new name to a variable. We did not. We did talk about. Just I just started it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So, as usual, um, I'm going to start with creating a project. Um, again, create a new project. Empty project. Selecting the directory I want to to work with. Name the project. <clears throat> Create it. Make sure that that checkbox is checked. Add the files I want. At the end of the class, do we see the, uh, the thing? Is it big enough? We're good? Are you okay? All right. Uh, using namespace std int main return zero. And we're going to go see out. Welcome to, to OOP244ZAA uh, January 19th. Okay, and I'm going to put 0 for January 19th, 0 for January 19th. Okay, compile and run it. <clears throat> Make sure everything is good. Now, today I'm going to work as if, uh, as if you are working on uh, your GitHub repositories. As you noticed, I um, actually I made a boo-boo over here. Well, it's not a boo-boo, actually. Whenever you are working with your... Uh, in your uh, repositories, this is the sequence of the things that you're working, uh, that you're going to do. The very first thing you do, you pull your repository. So the repository is pulled before anything, okay? <clears throat> Either it's going to be success, which means it's up to date, there is nothing to update, or it's going to pull all the changes from GitHub. So that's step number one at any time when you want to start working on your OOP244 work. First, you pull. Then, after you pull, you do what you want to do. Okay? And when you reach to a stage that you want to come back to, you commit your code. So now I started the lecture for January 19th. I'm going to right click over here and click on commit. Because I added, because I added new files, I'm going to click on all to add the new files. Or I could or I could manually add it. I could go to Tortoise Git and say add, okay? Which means, so if you add a new file first, you have to add it to the repository, then you commit. But if you didn't add anything, you're just modifying already added files, you just commit. So now, because I have new things I added, I can either manually add it over here, or when I'm committing, 
I can tell that I want these files that are, as you see, these are the ones that are not uh, versioned. I'm going to, they're on version. I'm going to click on all, which means add all the files. And then adding all the files, I'm going to uh, write something like uh, uh, January 19th. Uh, uh, starting January, no, starting January 19th lecture. Commit and push. And then I continue with my work. So whenever I want to, I can come back to this point. So when you write a function and the function is complete, you can always commit. Don't even push. You can just commit. So keep committing. It is uh, something that you need to get used to. Uh, all right, so that's that. Uh, we have talked about this. Uh, a quick uh, review of what we have talked about last time. Let me open up the, <coughs> the notes we, uh, we wrote last time. So I'm going to go over here. <coughs> the last thing was this one. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, let me just open it like this. There you go. So we just talked about references, and we said what references are. And as our friend called me over here, Freddy, we said, my name is Farda. Call me Freddy. Therefore, Farda and Freddy are the same people. And then we talked about uh, uh, C++, C++ being capable of doing the same thing, which means uh, I can create a variable and give the variable a new name. It doesn't mean I have two variables. There is one integer in this program with two names. One is A, the other one is R. Okay? So I can give new names to, to uh, objects uh, of, of any type. Are we okay with this? Do we understand this? This is extremely important. I want you to go back to the uh, mindset that you, were, if, that, you, that, that you had before. I can create a variable, any type of object, integer, double, car, employee, building, whatever vari type that I have, and I can give it a new name if I want to. So one variable can have many names. I can have five references over here, and none of them will actually create a new variable. It's just going to be a new name for an already existing variable. Are we all OK with that? OK? Knowing that, we're going to pause, and I'm going to go back to an IPC144 concept when we are teaching how functions work, OK? Before doing that, we need to understand the difference between initialization and the difference uh, between initialization and setting. Anybody remembers what initialization and setting? What is the difference between the two? OK, let me just do it like this. What is the difference between these two things? If I write integer a is 10, or if I write integer a and a set to 10. So integer x to 10. What is the difference between lines 5, 6, and 7? OK. So. You, you mentioned it properly, but you misused the word, OK? So at line 5, I am creating A. Then I am setting A to 10. It's not initialization. To initialize, it means to start something up. Please understand that fact. This is extremely important. At line 5, A will be created with garbage in it. So when A is created and its creation, its construction is finalized, it's an integer variable with garbage in it. Then I overwrite that garbage with A, with 10, which is setting it. Do we understand this? So A will exist, then it will be overwritten by 10. At line 7, X will get created with 10 in it, which means at no moment of time, x will have any garbage in it. It will start its life with 10 in it. Do we understand this? That's the difference between initialization and setting. When, an, when 
a variable, a type, anything is getting initialized, at the moment of its creation, it will accept values, and then it will start its life. But when you just create a variable without telling anything, the variable will be defaulted to whatever it's supposed to be defaulted, in this case defaulted to nothing, therefore garbage in it. Then I overwrite it with 10, and the garbage is gone. That's huge difference between the two. Okay, why? Because we mentioned references must be initialized. If I say integer reference R and I just write this one, it's not going to work. Because an alias by nature craves to be alias of something. If I told you Freddy is a nickname, as I mentioned before, that doesn't make sense. You have to say nickname of who? I have to say Freddy is Fardad's nickname. Now that makes sense. So I have to initialize Freddy by somebody who's alias. So I have to say, I don't know. You know what I mean, right? So you cannot have an alias just by itself. You have to initialize it. And that's the difference. I cannot set it afterwards. I cannot say over here, now R is X. I can't do that. It's not a pointer. A pointer is not an alias. A pointer is a variable by its own. When you create a pointer, we talked about it. It's just a variable that is supposed to hold the address of another. And if you don't set it, it's going to have garbage in it. It's going to point to nowhere, point to some garbage place. But a reference is a new name for an already existing thing, which means it has to get initialized, otherwise it cannot exist. Are we okay with this? Right? We're good? Okay. Now, so this is an error. Since R must be initialized uh, by uh, initialized to uh, refer to another variable. Okay? So the correct one is integer reference R is set to X, for example. And I cannot change it anymore. I cannot say, okay, R is reference of X. Now let's make it reference of A. You can't do that. When something is reference of something, it will be its reference till the end of its life. You cannot change the reference. Are we clear on this? Questions back there? I don't bite. Why are you guys going back there? You can come over here. <laughs> it's okay. No, no. Just take a seat. Take a seat. Well, I don't understand. But like students like to go to the very end of the class with binoculars. Anyways, um, um, are we okay? Down to this point? Are we okay? All right. So... Uh, so, references must get initialized. .cpp. Okay? Now, let's talk about functions. <clears throat> when I write something like this, if I say over here, void foo, and in here I say integer a, and I'm going to say c out a. Okay? When I write something like that, I created a function, right? We're okay with this? Okay. So when you call a function, what happens? If I say over here foo, and I have over here say integer x is 10, if I say here foo x, What happens when I say foo x? Can you tell me what happens? It's going to send the value of x into the function as a. As a. Fantastic. Okay. So that's actually perfectly correct. Okay. So the, the argument a that you see foo uh, integer a that I have over there, what is its lifetime? When it's born and when it dies? When function call it calls and when function ends, like after C out A and Y, it will die. Fantastic. So we, we are at the track right now. Two amazing question, uh, answers right off the bat. So int A is created when the function is called. When is the function called? At line 11, right? So the function call 
happens like this. Do we agree with this? That's how a function is called. The argument of the function is initialized but by what is being passed to it. Correct? Are we, good? Are we okay with that? All right. So, if I do something like this over here and I say A is set to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I do something like this and I say over here C out X, okay, what is the output of this program? What is the output of this program? You all got zero in the first question in the quiz. 10, 10, thank you. 10, new line, 10, new line. Okay, be exact. Exact. Okay, I know it's 10, but be exact. Two tens are printed, not one, separated by new lines. Okay, be exact. Okay, you all answered correctly, so you knew the answer, but be exact, please. Are we okay with this? Now, take a look at this. We just learned about references, right? If I do this, what's going to happen? So first of all, I can do this. Why? Because as my friend mentioned over there, A is born when the function is called, correct? And because when function is called, the argument of the function is being initialized to what's being passed to it, therefore I didn't uh, uh, break any rules. Literally, the reference A becomes a new name for X. Now what's going to be the output? 10 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I can change the value of the variable inside the function without a pointer. And without, as we say, dereferencing anything. Because the variable becomes a new name for a variable outside of its scope, whatever you do to, the, do to that variable is as if you have done to variable outside. And that's a beautiful thing. Which means, from now on, if you are passing single variables, I'm not talking about an array. An array, by nature, is a pointer. We talked about it yesterday, not yesterday, in the last session. I showed you it's a series of stuff with a pointer pointing to it. You have no way to pass an array by reference. That doesn't make sense, OK? There is some way, but anyway, we'll, we'll come to it soon. So, so just keep that in mind, OK? Are we OK with this thing? And remember. References, remember that references can be reference of any type, as long as it's one individual thing. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? All right, so now I'm gonna write some. So first of all, we understand, I'm gonna run this so, so make sure that it compiles. So now it actually changes, right? So. That's one of the amazing uh, uh, side effects of references. References used in functions. Now I'm going to write something extremely confusing. And I want you to see how it's going to work out. So I'm going to call this function. So let's write another function. Void point to integer, I'm going to this time go double, double pointer p. OK? Destination 
and source. So I'm going to say destination is set to source. Are we okay with this? So I am setting one pointer to another. Are we okay with that? All right. So we are, we are, we are on a track. So now, in here I'm going to have this integer um, A, I'm going to set it to 10. Integer B, I'm going to set it to uh, 20. And I'm going to have integer pointer P that holds the address of A. Therefore, when I say C out target of P, what is going, what is the output of this program, people? 10. Are we okay with this? Any problem with this? Back there, problem with this? Far in the other side of the universe? You're okay. All right. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to say point two. In here, I'm going to say pointer. I'm going to pass the pointer. In here, I'm going to say address of B. Why is it giving me an error? Oh, because it's double, you jungle. Okay, give me a sec. <laughs> double. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, double. 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 10.10. 20.20. Okay. What is the output of this program now? 10.10. Sorry about that. I, I, I made a boo-boo. Okay. Now, now I'm going to say 0.2. And now I'm going to say C out, pointer P. What is the output of this program now? Let's, I'm going to come to you. Let's see if I get three passes first. <laughs> My lady, that's your turn. What is the output of this program? What do you think the output would be? 10, 10, and 20, 20. Okay. Do you agree? Do you agree? Agree. Agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? You're all wrong. Let's run it. That's why all the things that I talked about last time, I kept telling you stuff, OK? I told you don't give pointers extra credit. You're just variables. If I did that with integers, you wouldn't hesitate. Because you knew the value is passed by, the, the, you know that in all functions, everything is passed by value. P, the destination, is just a variable. The, destina the destination and source are two variables, two integers passed to these functions. They get created in this function, and they die after this function, as my friend said over there. Correct? Destination and source, there are two integers that are dying at the end of this function. Do we understand that? Now in here, I, am, I have another integer that holds the address of A. And I'm going to say target of that integer is A, therefore it's going to print. Sorry, target of this double pointer is this a and prints 10.10. .10. Then I pass, what am I passing over here? The address of a and the address of b. They come over here. This becomes address of a. This becomes address of b. Destination will be set to address of b, and then it's going to die. It has nothing to do with this p. If I pass. If, I, if it was like this, then it would work. Because I say address of address of P and I pass the address. But that's too complicated for us because we don't know pointer to pointers. But we, two seconds ago, we learned about one thing. I created two seconds ago, two seconds ago, Two seconds ago, two seconds ago, we learned that if I just put an ampersand beside an integer, magic happens. It becomes a new name for whatever that is passed to it, correct? I told you when you put an asterisk after a type together, they are one type of type pointer, correct? 
So double pointer is a type, correct? And double pointer is a type. And this destination could simply be a reference. So now the function will be called like this. So, source will hold the address of B, correct? And destination becomes a new name for the pointer P in main, correct? Problem solved. When I come over here, this destination is not a variable anymore. It's a new name for P in main. Therefore, it will set it. Now, what you said will happen, okay? Do not give pointers extra credit. They don't do magic. They are just variables carrying address. OK? A pointer is just a variable carrying the address. When you pass an, a pointer, you can change its target, not the pointer itself. You follow what I'm saying? Are we good about this? OK? Now you have to do some practice on this too, to see what happens. Do that a few times and you'll see. Uh, we'll come to it soon. Okay, so in here, C, uh, ref, rents to all reference is for all types, even pointers, dot CPP. Okay, so do we understand that? Are we good? Are we okay down to this point? Let it sink in. It's a very simple concept. Again, remember I created that pointer thingy and I put it in the header file and I say it's just a type? Always look at pointers like that. They are just a type, single variables. They, are, they don't do magic. Okay, their job is to carry other people, others addresses. If you want to change the pointer itself, either you have to use a pointer to a pointer, which op345, or you can use a reference and just get over with it. Right? All right. Questions? Suggestions? Objections? All right, all right, all right. So, let me just do something else in here. Uh, I want to borrow. So that's the pointers we talked about last time. We don't want to talk about that anymore. And just to remind you of what needs to be done now? Now I'm going to come over here, right click, because I have several new things over here, right? I'm going to say commit, and I'm going to click on all again, saying end of reference lecture. Commit and push. So now if you come to this point, that's the end of the reference lecture, okay? So you keep doing like that. That's that should be how you that should be how you are going to you you you, you do your uh, development in your OOP two four four works repository. You keep committing. So the next le later you can come back to your uh, to your point. And if I if I just do this, ladies and gents, when I come actually to uh, the repo oh shoot I closed it by mistake. Your quiz is gone. I'm joking, it's not. I saved it. It's beautiful. It works perfect. All right. <laughs> so if you actually go to the repository 
and you go over here, you will see that it actually says end of reference lecture. So when you come over here, and let's say I'll come over here, and for example, end of reference lecture, you see that? If I click on that, it shows me what, what, function, what files were there and it's not. You see in here, this is a new file. This is a new file. This is a new file, but this is the main which I changed. So it tells what the main was and what I changed it to. Okay, so it shows the changes that was done in a repository. Therefore, when you have a problem and you contact me over Teams, I help you by cloning your repository and fixing your code and pushing it back. You can just pull and see what I did to fix your code. And you will reflect on it. Remember, that's the price you're paying for me to fix your code. So if you have problem with your workshop and stuff, you need help, you contact me, I'll fix it for you, push it, yada, yada, yada. That's what we're gonna do. He's happy. Okay. All right. Uh, also, um, sometimes it happens when you book an appointment, two people, because I didn't confirm another appointment, two people uh, book an appointment at the same time. Okay, if that's the case, I'm going to ask one of you to reschedule, okay? Don't be pissed at me, because that happened yesterday. So, anyways. Questions? Suggestions? We're good? Are we okay? All right. We are going to talk about memory. We said that, we said that when you create any type of variable in your program, those variables are engraved in your executable file. So when you create an array, that array goes literally inside your executable. If you made that array bigger, you can try it. Create a, a, an array of 10 integers or 10 characters in, in an executable just for the heck of it. Then create a thousand and each compare the two sizes when you compile. You will see that the one that has uh, 10,000 characters is bigger exactly to that uh, uh, to that size compared to the other one. So the more you do, and that's how uh, your, your variables are, are allocated and deallocated. So during the compile time, the content, uh, the, the, uh, literally the space in which your variables are supposed to be, goes, go, they go into your uh, executable. And then when your executable is loaded into memory, you have your array inside your executable, you do your work and everything, and if you over, you, you get out of your uh, array, you actually ruin your own executable. It destroys your program and your program crashes, okay? And if everything goes good and everything's fine, when program ends, your executable comes out of memory, and therefore all your variables are gone. This is perfectly good. There is no problem with this, okay? But what if I ask you to write the, 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 the program that I'm going to tell you now. It's a very simple IPC144 program. I am asking you to ask the user for, so you wanna, you're going to receive few integers from the user. So ask the user to enter few integers for you. And when it's done, print them in reverse order. Very simple, right? How would you write that program? So you're asking the user, how many integers user have? User's gonna tell you 10. You're gonna receive 10 integers. 
and you're going to print them in reverse order. How do you do it? How do you propose you do it? Anyone have a suggestion? Yes. Wait, 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 wait. Take it. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So create a for loop, but it starts, for example, with uh, five and goes uh, down to the zero. But how you get the variables? Um, I see. I know, but so, so we'll start. So we got, so user set 10. What do you have? What, where do you hold these variables? Uh, inside? Uh, inside the array. Inside the array. How big is the array? Uh, five. Where's the rest? We just said 10. Oh. I'm just so, so, so let's, say, let's say it's this, so 10. What if user says 20? Then you will get 20. No, because your array was 10. You have to rewrite your code and you recompile, right? Yeah. What if user says 1,000? It's impossible. We can't do it. With our knowledge, it is absolutely impossible to write such a program. The best thing is to say, what do you guess the maximum number be? And if I tell you it's 1,000, you're going to say, the heck with it. I'm going to create an array of 1,000 integers. If user says 5, I'm going to use the first 5. And as you say, do the loop reverse and print it, right? Right? So these are all fine. We can do that. But what if we really don't know how many? What if you ask the thing is, and the person says, I don't know, it could be three, it could be three billion. I don't know. What are you going to do? We can't do anything. Okay? What we can do, instead of asking the compiler, what we can do, instead of asking the compiler to give us the array, we can ask the operating system to give me the array. Instead of, now listen to me carefully, instead of asking the compiler to give you the array, I'm going to ask the operating system to give you the array. What is the difference between the two? When you ask the compiler, compiler gives you the array at compile time, correct? When you ask the operating system, you don't have any array in your code. Your program is compiled and finished. Your program runs. While it's running, it asks the operating system, can I have 20 integers? And it gives you the array. That is called dynamic memory allocation. And the array is not inside your executable anymore. Your array is actually inside what we call heap. So, and the code for it is like this. We talked about arrays. I told you an array is just series of variables with a pointer pointing to the beginning of them, right? So instead of creating an array, integer A5, I'm going to create a pointer called A, and I say new int 5. New is asking the operating system to give you memory. Array syntax is asking the compiler. Now, because it is asking the operating system, like an array, I don't have to put a constant value in here. Because it's asking the operating system, this 5 can be a variable. I can ask the user how many. I put the variable in here. I can have as many as I want while the program runs. One catch. My example has what we call a memory leak. Why? Because when the program ends, compile the operating system removes the executable from the memory, right? What is the allocated is your pointer. What happened to the memory that you allocated? It becomes a memory leak and remains in your memory, your RAM, forever. Where is forever? Until you reboot your computer. It's just going to be occupied over here. Nobody is allowed to use it because Somebody asked the operating system, I want these memory, and never said, OK, I'm done. You can get it back. The operating system keeps it reserved, and nobody uses it. Have you ever had problem with your internet connection? And you called Rogers or Bell, and they said, unplug the modem, wait for 15 seconds, and put it back in? That's the reason. Because the program was not written properly, and every time you make a new connection, it leaks some memory in the, in, the, in the memory of your modem. 
and it keeps going and these things add is added until your memory is filled with garbage. Your modem cannot function anymore. No internet because the modem is hang. It's, it, it doesn't have enough memory to run anymore. They tell you to unplug, it reboots, all the memory leaks are gone, and then you put it back in, then it works for another two months. Okay? That's what happens. And all the firmware updates that you see is for fixing these things. Okay? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it's not only that. Like, when, when you're... I'll explain that later. Ask me why, but it's not only that. It's memory being fragmented too. Because, yeah, but anyways, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. That's a different thing. But, but these days, our computers are, they have so much memory that, that, that like a program leaking like this, it's going to take three years to actually shut down our program. But that's not the only problem. You will see that why. Like, for example, I contact you and you ask me for help, I see your Google Chrome is open with 90 tabs at the top. And you say, I don't know why my computer is slow. You know that each tab is a new browser that you're opening. So you actually have 50 browsers running at the same time, each one occupying the memory. Oh, you wonder why my computer is slow? Just close down the bloody tabs for everything, right? Okay, that's it. All right, okay, all right, so that's that. Um, so now we know that's, that's what it is. Let's see how we can actually write the code for it. I did save this one, right, as reference, yeah. So I'm going to write the exact same program as we just mentioned, right? Printing this stuff in reverse order and see how we can do it, okay? So, what I need when I actually do this is first creating a pointer, right? Creating pointer, I'm going to call it nums. And this is just a, a bodyless array. Because we know pointers and arrays are interchangeable. They are identical things, no difference. And that's that. There is a golden rule of dynamic memory allocation. And I want you to listen to me now. For now that you're a rookie, follow this. When you are more experienced, you know when you can not follow this rule. But for now, religiously follow it. Unused pointers are always supposed to be null. You should keep them as zero. That makes it safe. I'll explain why. When I did this, either I will say equal to null PTR, Right? Or I just do this. Potatoes, potatoes. Are we okay with this? So I'm going to go over here. Oops. Sorry. All right. My apologies. All right. Um, so I'm going to say equal to null PTR. Are we okay with this? Okay, so that's literally I'm saying I have an array with no body. Now I'm going to have the number of integers. So I'm going to call it size t. Did I talk about size t before in this class? So size t is just an unsigned integer, right? So I'm going, to size, I'm going to say size t, number of ints. Uh, or, yeah, number of ints. That's good. Number of ints. <clears throat> and let's set that one to 0, 2. Now I'm going to say see out. Please enter the number of integers. OK? Then I'm going to say C in into number of ints. I love the fact that you actually, like, the, uh, I really thank you. You, you gave me the, the, the thing of how to do it. So this is exactly what we do. It. So I'm going to go get the number of ints. Now that I have the number of ints, I'm going to say nums is equal to new 
int number of ints. Now I have my array. Okay? And if you don't have enough array, what is the rule of unused pointers? If you don't have enough memory. And that can, because sometimes you're out of memory. If you don't have enough memory, what's going to be nums? No. That's the standard. If you cannot occupy enough memory, it's going to, so if I want to make sure everything is good, I'm going to say if nums, I'll do this, else I'm going to say out of memory, or memory allocation failed. I don't think in your lifetime you will see this message coming up, okay? Because now the operating systems not only work with their RAM, but when they're out of memory, they start swapping with the hard drive. So they actually start using your hard drive, and that's when it gets really slow. Your computer goes, because uh, now a, a physical drive is being used instead of a, uh, a, a very fast RAM. So usually you don't see that, okay? You won't see that um, memory thingy happening any time soon. Okay, so, so now, now that I have, so in this if statement, it means I have memory now. Okay, I have my arrays, right? Now I can go and ask. So now I can actually say for, so I'm just going to go size T, um, I, okay? And I'm going to say for uh, uh, i less than uh, number of ints, right? And i plus plus. I'm going to say see out. Uh, now nah, forget it. So I'm going to say see out. Um, uh, say uh, i plus one. And I'm going to show a prompt. Uh, let's do it like that. And I'm going to go C in, and I'm going to tr treat that nums exactly like an array, because it is an array. It's just a dynamic one. OK? And then after doing this, one by one, the numbers are taken. Now I can print them in reverse order. So I'm going to say 4, I set to 0, I less than uh, number of nums, number of ints, and I plus plus. In here, I'm going to, again, do the exact same thing. And I'm going to say C out, or I'm just going to put it over here. And I'm going to say, what am I going to So I'm going to put dot instead. And I'm going to go uh, nums, uh, no, number of ints minus i minus 1, right? To go reverse. <clears throat> and I'm done. If I do this, my program will have memory leak. Because what happened now? If I come over here, what happens? It runs and everything's done, and I didn't do anything with that, right? So what can I do? I need to say over here, delete those nums. That's giving it back to the operating system. Now this, could, this program will not have memory leak. It is impossible to have memory leak, OK? Now, could I put the delete nums over here? Could I put it over here to delete it anyway, even if the memory allocation was unsuccessful? The answer is yes. Delete has a mechanism inside. If the pointer you are deleting is null, delete just doesn't do anything, ignores it. So it's always what I program, when I program, I, it's like when you are writing an if statement, you open curly bracket and you close curly bracket. When I do a new, I do a delete immediately if it is supposed to be only in one function. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes you allocate memory in one function, you deallocate in another one. That's a different story. But in this case, it is safe. If you follow the rules 
of always keeping a pointer null when it's not used. Deleting a pointer is safe. You can just delete it. If it's pointing to something, it will deallocate. If it doesn't, it won't do anything. So you will see all this code that they say, if the pointer is not null deleted, that's just a waste of time. You never need to check to see if something is null before deleting it. Because that if statement is inside the delete. You don't need to do it. Got it? So please don't do it. You see this code in many places. Even ChatGPT does it. OK? Because ChatGPT searches everybody's code and gives you an example of theirs. It's stupid. It doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't follow the logic. OK? Now, but of course, after 10 years, it's going to ruin us all. But, but now it is like that. So, so careful, OK? So now if I run the program, let's see what happens. I'm going to walk through it step by step so you'll see exactly what happens. So this one's going to go at left. This one's going to go at right. I don't need that much space over here. I'm going to come over here. And sorry. OK. So it's going to come over here. Oops, it's, it's, I'm, I'm pressing F10. It comes over here. Welcome to yada, yada, yada. It creates the num, and num is null, correct? Right? Then it comes over here, number of ints, that's zero. It gets the number of integers. I'm going to say three, and I'm going to hit enter. Now it's going to say, operating system, give me three integers. As you see, nums right now is null, correct? But as soon as this happens, it's not null anymore. Now it's pointing to somewhere. Now I'm going to say start from zero and uh, show the row and one by one go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just come run to this cursor, run to cursor over here. There you go. So now I'm going to put over here 10, 20, and 30. Hit enter. It comes down over here. It goes by reverse. Showing the values. Oh, I forgot to go to new line. I'll fix that. I'll fix that later. So it showed it in reverse order, but I forgot to go to new line. And now it comes out. And you see delete is like that. It actually shows 10. OK, you see that? It means the first element is 10. Now as soon as I delete it, see what happens? It's garbage now. It's deleted. That's why I say for now blindly, so right now, it's not needed for me to set the num to null PTR, right? Because the program is over. Num's going to die. But for now, just to get used to it, do it. For now, I'll do it just to remember it obsessively. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? All right. Not needed. So in here, not needed. Just to force a habit. Okay, that's it. That's all I want to do. I just want to force a habit to myself. I want to create a habit. Right? Are we okay with this? All right. So that's dynamic memory allocation. And we can't do that for anything. Like, for example, so DMA is dynamic memory allocation. Intro. OK. So. Let's say I want to have series of names. Let's but go step by step. Let's say I want to have somebody's name held dynamically. So I don't have to allocate so much memory when it's not needed. Like, what do we do right now? We say, what is the maximum size a name can be? We say this much. And then we allocate that much, 
we put that much and we create. So it, it's crazy. Like, you know how much memory is wasted when you are actually having an array of names? Lots of characters over there not being used because I am putting some array to keep Fardat Suleimanlu and somebody's name is Li Lo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nothing. So it's just like three, three lines to five characters and mine is like 55, right? So how do we fix this? First, I create a record for a name. So I'm going to go struct name. OK? I'm going to have character pointer name. Oh, sorry, M name. Right? And character point pointer M surname. OK? I'll be OK with this, people. What is the size of that structure? A pointer is an integer, four characters, four, right? So that's eight characters, that's it. And that's the amount that I'm going to pay to actually hold the rest of the stuff, OK? No, it does actually. It is eight because I have two variables in there. I have two unsigned integers, two pointers. So it is eight bytes minimum, OK? We'll see. We're going to take care of that too. Are we OK down to this point? So what do I need to do? Now I want to be modular. I don't want to. I don't want to waste. Uh, like I don't. I, I, to do dynamic memory allocation, the best way to do to deal with this with things is to write your procedure and code in small pieces and only focus on that. And when you're done, you're finished. It's, you're, you're you're sure it's finished. You can. Set it aside and go think of something else, OK? So what I can do in here, I want to be able to set a name, right? How do you set a name? I'm going to say void set. I don't, and please don't call it set name, OK? Because we have polymorphism now. I can say set name, and I'm going to say name reference n. Now I know I can pass a reference of a structure to a variable, to, a, to, a, to an array, and change the contents of it. So that's what I do. So that's name, and I'll actually make it lowercase, n. And I need a constant character pointer name to set and a constant character pointer surname. OK? So how do I set a name? I have to first allocate memory for it, then copy the contents in, correct? That's what, that's what you need to do. I don't have an array. I want it to be dynamic. First, I have to do it that way. First of all, Actually, let me get the error, then they're going to fix it. So the very first thing I need to do is to uh, allocate memory. So I'm going to say n dot, oh, we want to code safe, right? OK, so it's a good idea to do this. Remember, unused pointers are always set to null. OK, like that, when a name is created, they are both in a safe, empty state, OK? It is in a safe, empty, safe, recognizable, empty state. When I open a name, if I see M name is null, I know this is a, an unused name. I know it's empty. I, don't, I know I don't need to do anything. So, so the very first thing I'm going to do in here, I want to make sure that I actually have a name and surname, because I'm dealing with pointers, right? What if this name is not pointing to anywhere? What if this name is empty? What if, this, uh, if the name is pointing to an empty thing? Maybe that's OK. Somebody has no name. No, nah, that doesn't make sense. I need to have something, right? So what I have to do first, I have to make sure that name and surname exist. They are not some null pointers that are coming in. So I have to say if name and surname. Are we all OK with this? So that means there is an array. But now it's a second step, because these are character strings. There could be an array, but no data in it, correct? How do I find out if a string is empty? And don't tell me you've got to do strlen and see if it's 0.
One more time. Where? First. So if the first one is zero and backslash zero, backslash zero is zero. Like, please don't eat a sandwich like this. It's zero, OK? Like, I see people put, oh, anyways. So, so, so in here, the next thing I need to do, now that I am sure, because if the condition is reached to this and, it means these two are both not null, right? If any of them are null, this is going to end. Nothing's going to be checked afterward. That is called lazy evaluation. Uh, C does lazy evaluation. It means if halfway through a logical statement, the conclusion is made, it's just going to ignore the rest. It's not going to do the rest. So now I'm going to say this one, this one, name 0, and surname 0. This means I have name and surname, and they are not empty. They have something in it to copy. Are we OK down to this point? Now it's time to do dynamic memory allocation. I'm going to say m. Sorry, n dot m name is equal to new character. How big the character is supposed to be? str len of name plus 1 for null termination. Re Forgetting this plus sign is most common reason you crash your program and get a segmentation fault and core dump thingy. Because you forgot to put that when you copy it, actually put something in it, and it's not yours. So that is created. Now I'm going to go n dot m surname, new character, str len of, what is the thing I didn't want? Surname plus 1. OK? And obviously, I'm going to have C string over here. And I have to have that defined CRT and secure, no warning. I'm, I, I haven't memorized what it is. I'm waiting for it to give me the error so I can actually copy and paste it. OK? So, so that's that. Now, the correct way of doing it is actually, after doing this, I have to now check to see if they're both allocated. OK? For now, we'll assume that they're OK. We have enough memory. I'm not going to test it to see if it's good or not, OK? After it runs, I'm going to add the safeties to it. But for now, let it be. So, and now I have them both. I can actually copy into them. So I'm going to say str copy into n dot m surname. And in here, I'm going to say name and str copy in n dot m surname. And I'm going to put surname. So the value is copied, and it's set. Right? Done. Forget about it. I know how it works. I know it sets, and everything is good. And I'm just going to close it. So, so set is done. Are we OK? Right? Now that I have set it, and that set actually allocates and everything, what I need to do is to deallocate it. Right? I need to be able to deallocate the name. How do I do that? <clears throat> I'm just going to create void, deallocate, and pass a name reference n to it. And because I know all the if statements are written in it, I'm not going to even think of anything. I'm just going to say delete n dot m name and delete n dot m surname. Are we OK with this? So I can set it dynamically, and I can deallocate it. You could be kind to, actually, you don't need to. I, I want to say, say, nah, forget it. Never mind. So, so set and deallocate. Are we OK with this? All right? And you make sure that you document these type of functions that they have some hidden logic. You put one. Two, three, boom, it comes up, right? And then in here, you're going to say sets the name and surname dynamically, dynamically in the name object. OK? Object. N is
reference name reference this one is uh, uh, first name C string first name C string first name and uh, C string last name okay now what does this do when you hover over set see what happens it says set sets the name and surname dynamically in the name object parameters n is name ref reg that's a ref I have to fix it and this is HTML so if you want to go to new line you cannot go to new line you have to actually put a br over here to go to new line uh, to break the line so this gives you an amazing comment comment for it so later on if you want to know and wherever you have the set you just bring it on it gives you the comments for it. it's an amazing tool to do it use it uh, I'll appreciate if you do it okay so and the allocate and the allocates the memory used by name object done okay and parameter is uh, the name to be the, the, the name object okay done are we okay and that helps everything so I can actually go over here and see what it is so all the other okay what is the next thing I need to do I need to read the name I need to get the name right so I'm gonna say over here void read and in here I'm gonna say name reference n now I can actually because I'm in a function right I can create local variables over here that gets created and die at the end so I'm gonna say how big a name can be right I'm gonna say a name can be like 20 characters so I'll make it 41 so I'm gonna go over here character name 41 and then I'm gonna have character surname 61 right and it's not wasted it's just in my executable when read comes they get created when it's gone they, they vanish so I'm not occupying any memory for it okay in the RAM so in here now I'm gonna say see out uh, uh, name I'll go see in name see out surname and I'm gonna go see in surname and I know that 99.9% .9 of users are idiots, but for the case that we are at this stage of our programming, we assume our users are sane people. And actually, right, when I say name, they're not going to say coffee table. They're going to actually put their name. Okay? So we're okay with that, right? And, yeah. <clears throat> and we assume they don't put any spaces in between. Okay? So for now, this is what we're going to do until we learn how to do all the scene stuff. Now that I have the name and the surname, what do I do? Set n with name and surname. Done. And if I want to remember how set works, again, right? I can just go over it and it tells me exactly what it is. What it is. So that's going to read the name. <clears throat> what else I need to do with the name? I need to print it out. So I'll do that. So I'll go void, print. Now in here I'm going to say name. Oh, const, sorry, const name reference n. Remember, always enforce your, fo oh, uh, let me close this. And in here, uh, again, I'll do like this. Uh, reads, uh, sets a name by getting them from console from user okay and in here is name object okay so that's that so let's minimize this and this and this so these are done what is the next thing we need to do we want to print this thing right so I'm gonna say print and in here I'm gonna say see out oh I need to know if the name is actually a valid name maybe the name is empty right so in here I'm gonna say either you test it over here or you write the condition in here you say bool is empty 
and in here you say const name reference n. I would do it this way so I don't have to keep doing something over and over. So in here I'm going to say return <coughs> uh, n.m name being equal to null ptr or uh, ptr or n dot m surname is being equal to null ptr. If any of them is null, my, my name is empty. Right? Now in here I'm going to say if, if not is empty, the n, I'm going to say c out n dot m name and n dot m surname and I go to new line otherwise I'm going to say c out no name ah okay are we good and then I'm going to comment this. Now you go for a break. I'm going to comment this one. We'll, we'll continue after five minutes, OK? I'm just going to put comments in here. So now, now we have these functions set. I have a print. I have is empty. I have read. I have the allocate. I have set for the uh, name that I have. So all I need to do over here is to, I'm going to comment all these for now. And I'm going to reuse it. To show you that they're all the same. So let's have this as a comment. So all I need to do now is to say name pointer n, right? I can say n is equal to new name right? I'm not putting, because I just want one name for now and see how it works, right? Now I'm going to say set. Oh, no, I'm not going to say. I'm going to say read n. Not like that. Read n. Why is it giving me? Oh. Oh, I don't even need to do that. Uh, what do I do? Oh. N is not a pointer, sorry, N is a normal N, <laughs> because the dynamic memory allocation is inside. We don't need to do anything. I'm just going to say read N, because it has everything inside, right? <clears throat> and then I'm going to say print N, and I'm going to say uh, deallocate name, right? And in here, what I'm going to do is this just to see if print is working properly I'm gonna print the empty name too right so let's walk through this see if it works okay this is a modular one so I'm gonna go over here with start I have build errors what is the build error? unresolved symbol main yes this is temp I have <laughs> sorry I renamed it because of the other one anyways so there we go. It's going to say welcome to Schmigli Dingy, and we're going to put it over here. Uh, all right. Now it's going to create name. As you see, name has null for both of them because we initialized it inside, right? Now it's going to say print. It comes over here. It checks, is it empty? In empty, I say if either of them is equal to null, return true. Therefore, it is empty, and it comes and prints no name, right? Are we okay down to this point? All right. Now it comes to read. In read, it creates two empty names, as you see. And then it says print the name and asks for the name. I'm just going to come right down to set. So this is going to... Oh. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Stop. And do it again. Yeah. Remember I said user is an idiot? Okay. Okay, so that's Fred, and that's Soleil. Okay, so now it comes in here. So name, so name has Fred in it, and surname has Soleil in it. It goes into set. <coughs> uh, 
it is not null, it comes over here, finds what is the length of fret, adds one to it, allocates memory, puts it in name, so name is now pointing to some garbage where this one is null. And we do that, it is pointing to some garbage, but it's my garbage, allocated to the exact size for the name. I do not need to check to see the length is good or not, because shoe matches the foot exactly. I set this thing to be exactly size of that one. I can comfortably SDR copy to it, and it's going to fit exactly what it's supposed to fit. And as you see now, name is Fred, surname is Soleil. It comes out. It goes to print. If it's not empty, it's going to print it. It goes to deallocate. It doesn't care if it's null or not. It will delete it anyway. And I forgot something extremely important. What was it? Obsessively, n m name is m m n m surname set to null PTR. If I don't do that, see what I'm going to have in name. Name is still garbage after deleting. So if I want to print this again, if I, I, I hope that it doesn't compile, it, it doesn't do it. Let me see. No, nah, it didn't work. I just, I should have, I should have deallocated without that and printed it. You will see it would crash. It would show me some garbage, which uh, I'm not supposed to use. But anyways, so that's that. So it's actually using it. Now, at home, the, uh, do another print over here. Let's actually do it, okay? So I'm going to have another print over here and run it now. So what happens is that I'm going to say over here, Fred Soleil, and it's going to say Fred Soleil and no name, right? Now, <clears throat> I am going to come over here and in the allocate, I'm going to comment this, right? Now I'm going to print. I'm going to say Fred, Soleil, and this is what happens. Garbage is printed over there. So you have to be careful. The rule is unused pointers are always null, no exception. OK? Always after delete, make sure you set whatever you have to null. Are we OK down to this point? Yes. Which brings us to this. Problems with dynamic memory allocation that we have to be careful about. Number one, using an uninitialized pointer. When you create a pointer, if you start using it without dynamic memory allocation, you are going somewhere and everything is bad, right? Number two, when you set it to null and try to go to somewhere, it is null. It gives you null pointer assignment and it fails. Down to this point, are we okay? Are we okay? Next one. When you allocate memory with an array, stay within. Don't get out. If you get out, you are going out of your thing and it crashes. Are we good with that? All right. Next one. If you just reuse it and do not delete it, you will have memory leak. If you set it to null, what's going to happen? It's just going to set it to null, correct? Therefore, that becomes memory leak. You just set the pointer to null. It's like those, why did you go like that? Are you OK with that? It's, they, they say like that there are these, I don't know, these this birds when, when uh, Predator attacks, they put their head under the snow. They think nobody sees them. That's like that. When you just set it to null, you think it's gone. It's not gone. Memory is still there. You didn't give it back to operating system. It becomes memory leak. That's one of the most common mistakes. Yeah, but the one that you forgot, it's like when you are cleaning your house, instead of actually Cleaning the dirt, you just swipe it under the rug and just like this clean now. <laughs> After a while, your, your cup is going to come higher and higher. Yes, back there.
you can reuse a pointer. We're going to come to that, resizing memory. We're going to come to that. Like, for example, we'll come to that. But for now, I'm just explaining what things may go wrong. You ha if you reuse, you have to always set it to, set it to, uh, to delete it. You cannot just set it to null or reuse it. And also, correct state of unused is always null. You have to make sure that uh, you allocate memory and you keep track of the size somehow. With strings, you don't need to keep track of the size because null points the end of the data, right? But if it's an array of integers, you need to keep track of how many do you have. You have to always delete after you're done. If you do not delete, you're going to have memory leak. And after you delete, you have to set it to null. Also, you have to delete the way you create it. You can dynamically allocate one single memory. There is no problem with that. I can have, I can have integer pointer a is equal to int semicolon. That's it. That's one integer that I allocated for whatever reason. OK? If you delete that, then you, you, you should not put square brackets in front of it because you have only one entity. But if you have many, you have to put square bracket. If you don't, only the first one gets deleted, not all the array. And that causes memory leak. And when using pointers, always make sure they are actually not being used. It's extremely important. So as you see, freeing memory is outside of the if statement. OK? If the data is not null, make sure if the data has something important, take care of it. For example, you have some data inside something, you don't want to lose it. First save it in a file, then delete it. Make sure if it's not null, you really don't want it. Then wipe it out. But don't put the free thing inside there. It doesn't make sense. That has the uh, mechanism in it. Always reuse the memory with new size and stuff. And remember what the new size is. Always keep track of it. Stay within your limit, and you are safe. We'll talk about all the problems with not setting null and stuff like that. We'll come to it later on. But that's essentially was your question. Now, it's 42. We are to 45, correct? So what I want you to do, I'm going to do it very quickly in here. So this one I'm going to save. I'm going to say it's the E1 name.cpp. OK. <clears throat> and come back over here and do this. Just uh, take a look at this. I'm going to come right down to here, take this out, and see what I'm going to do. Take a look, please. Very quick. Int nums, I'm going to make it name. And nums, I'm going to change it to n. OK? So name pointer size number of ints is number of names. The rest is identical, no difference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you have. So n is equal to new name number of names. You see that? Size t, it goes number of names. And instead of c in and i, I'm going to say read and i, correct? And in here, when I'm printing, instead of printing like that, I'm going to go print the name. And done. So now what I'm doing is exactly what I've done with integers, but an array of names. So not only my array of names are dynamic, but each element is pointing to something dynamic. This is how, it, how it's done. OK? So now you run the code. It works the exact same way, but it works for names. Enter a number of names. I'm going to say two. I'm going to say Fred. Soleil and uh, Jack or whatever, and it shows it in reverse order. Ta-da! 
Are we good? Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. I cannot ask you if you have any questions because the other class is here and you're not going to have your quiz today. Have a beautiful day, everyone.